और डियर स्टूडेंट्स आई एम अ महेश जवलकर ऑफ मराठा मंडल पॉलिटेक्निक एंड टुडे आई एम पोस्टिंग माय फर्स्ट वीडियो ऑन द अक्टूबर 2020 ट्वेंटी डी क्वेश्चन पेपर सॉल्व ओके सो इन दिस वीडियो आई विल सॉल्व द फर्स्ट ट्वेंटी क्वेश्चन ऑफ द इलेक्ट्रॉनिक सेक्शन ओके सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन नंबर वन फाइंड द वैल्यू ऑफ आल्फा if beta is equal to 5.67 okay now this question is based on current amplification factor in common base that is alpha and current amplification factor in common emitter that is beta okay now in our theory we have proved that alpha in terms of beta and beta in terms of alpha okay so here we have to find out the value of alpha in terms of beta so for that formula if you see alpha is equal to IC upon IE that is a collector current upon emitter current and beta is equal to IC upon IB that is a collector current upon base current and if you see the relationship the alpha in terms of beta is given as beta upon beta plus 1 and beta in terms of alpha is given as alpha upon 1 minus alpha so we have to take alpha is equal to beta upon beta plus 1 so if you take that beta upon beta plus 1 so if you stay here alpha is equal to beta upon 1 plus beta or beta plus 1 anything you can take so here 1 plus beta that is equal to 5.67 upon 1 plus 5.67 this is nothing but 5.67 upon 6.67 this is nothing but 0.85 so here the value of alpha is equal to 0.85 so option b will be the right answer here so we can see option b is the answer for this value okay then we'll go to the next question for a bjt transistor in common emitter configuration it has to if it has to work as an amplifier then the first condition if it has to work as an amplifier is the bjt should be in active mode and for for it to be in active mode the first junction of the configuration should be forward biased and the second junction of the configuration should be reverse biased now in a common emitter configuration base emitter junction will be the first junction which should be forward biased and second junction that is a collector emitter junction which is second junction should be the reverse biased okay so in this option a will be the right answer b e that is base emitter junction is forward biased and ce that is a collector emitter junction is reverse biased okay so option a is the right answer for the bjt to work as an amplifier in common emitter mode okay then we'll go to the next question a varactor diode that is variable capacitor diode is used as a what okay now by varying a capacitor we can vary the frequency okay if you are varying the frequency then you are speaking about oscillator so that is variable a capacitor diode it can be used as a voltage controlled oscillator vco so out of these four options vco will be the right answer because here you can vary the capacitance and vary the frequency of vco okay so a varactor diode can be used as a voltage controlled oscillator vco will be the right answer here then we'll go to the next question semiconductor material used in led is okay so out of these options which option is correct whether a gallium arsenide is correct or indium phosphorus is correct or potassium or carbonate is correct or silicon is correct so out of these four options option a that is a gallium arsenide is the right answer if you see the theory of it the light emitting diodes are comprised of compound semiconductor materials which are made up of elements from group 3 and group 5 of the periodic table okay so in this group 3 5 materials commonly used to make leds are gallium arsenide gaas and gallium phosphide gap okay so in this option gallium arsenide will be the right answer semiconductor material used in led is gallium arsenide then we'll go to the next question the efficiency of ideal full wave rectifier is how much now we have proved in our theory of full wave rectifier that the efficiency is 81.2% okay so your option c will be the right answer and if you see here that is after the theory if you see the 
IDC and IRMS relationships. Okay, so IDC will be 2 IM by pi, which is equal to 2 VM upon pi RL, and IRMS is equal to IM upon root 2, which is equal to 0 0.707 IM. If you take the rectifier efficiency, which is equal to DC power upon AC power, and if you substitute these values, okay, then you will get 81.2 percent if the diode resistance is negligible as compared to the load resistance. So 81.2 percent will be the right answer as efficiency of ideal full wave rectifier. Okay, then we'll go to the next question. SMPS works mainly on which concept, whether it is PAM, PWM, PCM or PSM. Okay, so the SMPS works mainly on PWM that is pulse width modulation. Okay, in PWM, you can vary the width of the pulses. Okay, and if you vary the width of the pulses, the on time of the pulses will vary, the duty cycle of the pulses will vary, and the output or voltage of the SMPS can be varied. That is, output voltage or power can be varied. So, here PWM, that is pulse width modulation, will be the answer. So, here if you see the a concept. The switching action of the a transistor is controlled using a technique called as pulse width modulation and the output voltage can be regulated by the duty cycle of the pulse width modulation that is PWM. So here the answer will be PWM. And then we will go to the next question. The a point of intersection of DC and AC load line okay, is called as. Now this is with respect to BJT. So you will be having a DC load line. We have studied about a DC load line and we have also studied about AC load line. The point of intersection of this both lines is called as operating point or it is called as Q point. So if you see a figure like this, so here you can see where AC and DC load lines are intersecting. So there, here you have a Q point. This is nothing but your operating point. This is nothing but operating point. This is a point where you can operate your circuit for, for faithful working. Okay. So it is called as operating point or Q point. So operating point is the answer here. The point of intersection of DC and AC load line is called as operating point Q. Okay. So then we'll see the uh, next question. A feedback circuit usually employs dash network. Okay, so the options are a resistive network or diode network or transistor network or SCR network. It is obviously resistive network because in a resistive network you don't have leading or lagging of current or voltage. It is not reactive. Okay, so in a resistive a network voltage and current will be in phase and that is what is used for a feedback circuit. So here option if you see the theory also using a resistor in the negative feedback loop we can control the gain in two ways for inverting amplifier v out is equal to rf upon r into v in and for non-inverting amplifier v out is equal to 1 plus rf upon r in, into v in. okay so here a feedback circuit usually employs resistive network will be the answer then we'll go to the next question the ratio of a differential voltage gain ad to the common voltage gain ACM is called as AD upon ACM. This is with respect to operational amplifier op-amp. So if you take the ratio of a differential gain upon common mode gain, it is giving you common mode rejection ratio CMRR. So here option B will be the answer. If you see the definition of that, CMRR is defined as the ratio of the differential gain to the common mode gain. That is CMRR is equal to AD upon ACM. Okay, so it is option B, CMRR, which is suitable for this definition. Okay, then we'll go to the next question. The op-amp can amplify. The options are AC signals only, DC signals only, both AC and DC signals, and neither AC or, or DC signals. So here the option C will be the right answer. The op-amp can amplify both AC and DC signals. So if you see the theory in that, Opam based amplifier is basically designed as a DC amplifier that is having a frequency range from 0 hertz to something like 50 kilohertz. Okay, so if you're speaking about 0 hertz, then it is something DC, some DC you're speaking about. So it is covering both the DC and the AC range also. That means it can amplify DC and AC signals. So here, both AC and DC signals can be amplified by Opam, will be the answer. Option C is the right answer. Then we'll go to the next question. The 
are important features of phase lock loop PLL is what? Okay. So out of these four statements given, option B, that is its output frequency will be locked to an input frequency. This is the main work what a PLL is going to do. Okay. Its output frequency will be locked to an input frequency will be the answer. Option B will be the answer. Okay. So here you can see a, a PLL is a feedback system that includes a voltage control oscillator, phase detector and a low pass filter within its loop. Its purpose is to force the voltage control oscillator to replicate and track the frequency and phase at the input when in lock. This statement gives you the answer. Okay. So here its output frequency will be locked to an input frequency. Okay. Then we'll go to the next question. Barkhausen criteria for oscillator is okay. Now Barkhausen criteria for a closed loop circuit that is amplifier with a feedback circuit. Okay, so there the amplifier gain that is A multiplied by beta that is feedback circuit should be equal to unity 1. That is option B, A into beta is equal to 1 is one of the criteria for sustained oscillations. Okay, so option B will be the right answer here. So here you can see a conditions which require to be satisfied to operate the circuit as an oscillator are called as Barkhausen criteria. For sustained oscillations, the Barkhausen criteria should be satisfied by an amplifier with positive feedback to ensure the sustained oscillations. For an oscillation circuit, there is no input, hence the feedback signal VF itself should be sufficient to maintain the oscillations. And the Barkhausen criteria says that the loop gain is equal to unity, that is beta into A, that is the feedback network beta into the gain of the amplifier A should be equal to 1. So beta into A or A into beta should be equal to 1 is the answer here. Then we will go to the next question. And SCR has dash semiconductor layers. Now if you study any of the thyristor family. Now silicon controlled or rectifier is the main thyristor component. Now if you study any of the thyristor family component. They will generally have 4 layers. Okay, so an SCR has four semiconductor layers. So if you see the a diagram of SCR structure also, we, we had seen that it will be having a structure like this, okay, in which you will be having four semiconductor layers, one, two, three, four. The first one will be named as P1, then this is N1, this is P2, this is N2, this will be your anode, and this will be your gate, and this will be your cathode okay cathode so it is having four layers one two three four four layers are there for a SCR that is semiconductor device four layers okay so four layers and three junctions you have so here if you are speaking about semiconductor layers it is four so answer should be four only. then we'll go to the next question a single phase fully controlled bridge rectifier uses. Okay. Now here we are speaking about fully controlled bridge rectifier. If you are having a fully controlled bridge rectifier, then incoming path and returning path both should be having an SCR. So there should be four SCRs here. One for positive path and one for negative path. A positive path will also be having two SCRs. A negative path will also have two SCRs. So four SCRs. So if you see the circuit here, T1, T2, T3, T4 are the four thyristors or the four SCRs shown in a fully controlled rectifier. So here option will be four SCRs. Okay, then we'll go to the next question. If T is the time period for a chopper circuit and A is its duty cycle, then what is the chopping frequency from these four options? Okay, now from these four options, if you substitute the fourth option, if you see the fourth option, the fourth option says that it is A upon T on, okay, which is nothing but a duty cycle upon T on. Duty cycle is T on upon T on plus T off, okay, this upon T on, okay. So this is nothing but T up on upon time period, this upon T on, okay. This is nothing but 1 upon T, which is nothing but frequency F. This is your chopping frequency. This is your chopping frequency. 
okay so the option d if you substitute then you will get the chopping frequency one one upon t is equal to f okay so here option d will be the right answer a upon t only okay then we'll go to the next question which of the following inverters allows multi motor operation okay whether it is voltage source inverter or a current source inverter or both voltage source inverter and current source inverter or none of the above okay now out of this when we have studied all these inverters and when we are compared voltage source inverter to a current source inverter we saw that voltage source inverter was very fine and very accurate to control many motor operations okay so if you want multi motor operation then we have to go with voltage source inverter okay so if you see the a comparison of vsi and csi in the last point you can see multi motor operation is possible in vsi whereas multi motor operation is not possible in csi okay so here the voltage source inverter vsi will be the answer which will allow multi motor operation then we'll go to the next question dash cyclo converter requires forced commutation okay so after these options option b that is step up cyclo converter is the right answer because here in a cyclo converter basically we are doing ac to ac conversion but for step up ac should be converted to dc and then back to ac so once you are coming in between to dc then to stop the circuit at regular interval we have to use forced commutation so a forced commutation is used in step up cyclo converter so here it, well, we can see that option b step up cyclo converter is the right answer step up cyclo converters are one which require forced commutation that is it should be forcefully off the scrs used in that should be forcefully off okay then what do you mean by hmi hmi stands for human machine interface okay for example your atm machine you can have a human machine interface there just by touching the machine if you can have the touch as an interface okay so you can have interface with the smell also you can have interface with other sensing also okay but a uh, human machine interface is the answer for hmi that is hmi means human machine interface so the best example for that is your atm machine okay so human machine interface b will be the answer for this then we'll go to the next question an or function implemented in ladder logic uses option a says that normally closed contacts in series normally open contacts in series normally closed contacts in parallel and normally open contacts in parallel okay now if you want to have a or function with a ladder diagram in your plc then it should be normally open contact in parallel option d will be the right answer here so if you see here uh, this normally open contact a and b are in parallel now this is giving you the or operation if a and b are the input and if you see the output for a 0 0 the output is 0 for 0 1 the output is 1 for 1 0 the output is 1 and for 1 1 the output is 1 that means it is functioning as a or gate okay so it is here we can see that a open a contact a and b are in parallel okay so here we can see that normally open contact in parallel okay so or function can be obtained by normally open contact in parallel then we'll go to the next question 8051 microcontroller has dash byte ram on chip now whenever we study the 8051 a microcontroller the features of that in the features only we see the main five important points and out of that five important points uh, one point is 128 byte ram on chip on chip ram is 128 byte for 8051 this we have to remember as a feature of 8051 okay so here the option will be option b 128 byte so 8051 microcontroller has 128 byte ram on chip okay now students here i have taken the first or 20 question of the electronic section from the dct question paper for october 2020 okay in my next video i will take the next or 20 questions of the same question paper thank you students